you'll see that the old Dutch Jewish families usually have uh, some insecurity or are uh, anxious about being Jewish. And I, I understand this uh, mentality very well since I have the same background. I was raised both anti-religious and anti-Zionistic. And at a certain point I heard I was Jewish. That must have been around bar mitzvah age. I didn't do bar mitzvah then. My mother didn't frame it really as a positive thing. So I thought, you know, if, if I'm really Jewish and if it's important, then there's probably much more to it. And uh, sometimes people ask me also uh, if I was Jewish. And then I usually ask them, well, uh, maybe I have a Jewish mother. And then some people, uh, usually Christians, they told me, okay, well, if your mother is Jewish, then you are Jewish. I think I was 17 or 18 when I went to the synagogue for the first time. But it was a bit of a strange experience for me. This rabbi wanted me to prove I was Jewish. He wanted the papers. I didn't have a matzaiva. I didn't even have a bris or a, or a bar mitzvah or anything. Uh, very typical for the Dutch Jewish community uh, of around 30, 40,000 people today is that we were already more assimilated before the war uh, than average. One of the more assimilated communities in, in Europe. Uh, we had the highest percentage of we in Western Europe of Jews being killed during the Holocaust, around 80%. So the other 20% hide it. A lot of children hide it at people's houses. And usually people here were Christian, right? So they were influenced by Christianity. So there were a lot of people looking for their roots. And I was interested. I was interested because I was already looking for the meaning of life. So um, I came to Amsterdam for Yiddishkeit and for my studies in sociology. So I thought then I can discover my Judaism there. And in 1999, I went for one year to Or Sameach in Jerusalem, Yeshiva Or Sameach, and then they brought me to Moalim. So if you're looking backwards, that took me many years to say, oh, I'm Jewish. It was something very weird for me. I started looking for a job. I heard they needed a chaplain in the Dutch forces, a Jewish chaplain. And in the end, I became the Jewish chaplain. I became the army rabbi here in the Dutch forces. Uh, the main thing I do here uh, is really caring for individual soldiers, Jewish troops. We uh, think that there are about 200 Jews in, in, the, in the forces today, and most of them we know. So we try to keep the, the cashier, we try to stay in contact with them. We visit them at the workplace, and sometimes also people with a Jewish father interested, or people that are not Jewish at all. So that's how I also do sometimes a care for non-Jewish uh, people in the military here. I uh, also work freelance as a tour guide, for usually American Jews or Dutch Christians. And usually I do tours here in Amsterdam uh, because Amsterdam always has been central in the Dutch Jewish identity, in Dutch Jewish history. And uh, before the war, there were all already uh, uh, also the non-Jews refer to Amsterdam as Mokum, right? That comes from Makom, and uh, there, are, there are hundreds of, of Yiddish and Hebrew expressions in the in, in Dutch up till today. Well, we're standing here actually because this is the monument for the February strike of uh, February '41, that uh, thousands of non-Jews went on strike because of the razzias against the Jews, which is uh, uh, very famous in European history, that the, that the non-Jews came up for the Jews here. Now, in the back you see the famous synagogue, the Portuguese synagogue, one of the most famous synagogues in the world, from 1675 until the war. About 10% of the people in Amsterdam was Jewish. Now, what, what I find very special is that I still have this connection with the, with the old community of before the war. But of course, it's sometimes also hard that a lot of it is gone, a lot of it is, is vanished. But I'm still here.